Welcome to English Listening and Vocabulary. Section 3. You will hear a tutor and two students discussing international student mobility. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi, Nils. Hi, Eva. Come in and sit down. You wanted to talk about your research paper, is that right? Yes. We've drawn up an outline for the introduction and done some preliminary interviews. And how did that go? We've come across some interesting findings. OK. Well, let's go through what you've done so far. What's the subject? Right. So, we're doing our paper on international student mobility. We're looking at the overall picture. You know, where overseas students are going in the world to study and why. And we think that picture's changing. Hmm. Sounds interesting. The first thing we've looked at is numbers. And as part of that, um, how many students there are in total who are studying outside their own country. That seems easy. It looks like it's around 3 million. Yeah, but the problem is that the definition of the term international student varies across countries. Yeah, and because of that, the figure could be much higher. I see. Our next question was, well, we wanted to know what the breakdown of numbers is around the world. You know, how many students go where. But we're not sure how accurate those figures are either. Yeah, even though it's the fastest growing sector of higher education, some ministries don't include the students at private institutions in their count. Mm, it's quite frustrating. Anyway, um, next we wanted to know where the majority of students come from. This is something that's changing quite rapidly. Well, that would be an interesting point. But what's changing? Most people know that the largest group of international students comes from East Asia. But what we hadn't realised is that figures for the US have quadrupled over the past 20 years, and a lot more students from Europe are also now studying abroad. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, we need to look at some more figures there. Lastly, we looked at the countries that students go to and the trends there. Yeah, our question really was about the destinations of international students and whether they're changing. And they are. Countries like China are providing more higher education opportunities for their own students and for students from places like Britain. This means that higher education is becoming more... Well, there are high levels of competition. But with that, there's also a spirit of exchange. It's not so one-sided anymore. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. So, you said you'd done some preliminary interviews. Yes. We thought we'd start by talking to some of the international students in our city. Just to help us design the web interviews we plan to do. OK. We wanted to find out if there are common factors that students consider to be important when they choose an overseas course. Obviously, these will vary across the international student population, but we thought some, like cost, might be significant. Surprisingly, a lot of students said they left finances to their parents, but they did want to know that their university was a good one. They said they decided about this by talking to friends at home, not by looking at how many degrees or publications the staff had. That's right. 
But they were interested in the degrees they were taking and whether when they finished their course they'd get a good job. Okay. What else did you ask them about? What sort of incentives they think source countries should offer students to encourage them to return home after they've graduated? A very interesting question. What did you find? Well, many said that if they chose to get another qualification, they'd stay or move to a third country to do this. Yeah, so there doesn't seem to be much point in offering scholarships to get them to return home to study. What about grants for research? Post-graduation. That was much more popular, especially if the system let them compete individually for these. And many students were keen to go home and get a job if they could be sure they'd have a good income and lifestyle. For example, they felt that the government should perhaps offer tax exemptions so that they could afford to live in a nice area. Some countries have created special work zones for incoming graduates, particularly in the science field. Yeah, and some of these include apartment blocks as well. Mm, but as many of the students we talked to were art students, this didn't seem to appeal to them. Okay. Well, I think that's a pretty good start. Let's just think... That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Subscribe to the channel for more videos. Support us by clicking on the like button and leaving your comments here. Thank you.